Hey guys, it's my heart on display here. It's been a while. I have been going through a lot of things, uh, trying to manage my social media, but not doing a very good job of it. This will be my first video in a while, and I decided to do something a little bit different. So I'm actually really camera shy. Um, and with being camera shy, I've just kind of been refraining to be on video, but lately I've been feeling kind of like a change in myself and I want to be more personable with you guys, so I decided to jump on camera. I have a ring light, as you can see in my glasses. Um, I can't get rid of it, I'm sorry. And in the background, you can see like I have my Nendoroids. That's usually where I shoot my footage. Um, and then I've got a nice little you know, entertainment type center with some of my prize figures on it. We're on the road to 50 subscribers. Hey, um, thank you guys for supporting my content. It really does mean a lot, and especially in a time where I haven't felt the most confident about it, uh, I appreciate that there are people out there that want to see it, so uh, thank you for that. And I haven't really been buying a lot of figures, I've mostly just kind of been saving my money for the pre-orders to come. Uh, at the same time though, I've been having an itch that I need to scratch, so I have a lot of different figures that are supposed to be coming at the end of March. So. I've also been getting some figures from some of my local anime, you know, Weeb Otaku events, so I'm gonna do more of like a monthly haul at the end of the month to show what I've got um, and maybe do some unboxings all in one video. Um, or I can break them down depending because, you know, I don't want to overload you guys at one time. So these months have been slow, man. I've had seven delays in the past two months and I'm hoping, hoping that at the end of this month, um, I'll finally get some figures to show off for you guys. What I'm going to be doing today is a little different. I am growing my collection. It's always growing. I, I, I still don't think that I have a lot going for my collection quite yet. So I'm happy to continue to grow that. Uh, but I am still really proud of it. So what I want to go over today is more along the lines of where does my collection stand as far as my favorite figures? Collecting figures is a hobby that I enjoy, and a lot of my favorite characters I have figures of. And I just wanted to show those to you, uh, see if you like them just as much as I do. Um, I've got some B-roll footage to show with them too, so I hope you guys enjoy those. I am gonna be focusing on scale figures because those I feel like I have spent the most time in finding, the most money on, definitely. And also, um, where I put a lot of my value as far as my collection. So let me know what you guys think. Um, make sure to, you know, like and subscribe if you like my content. I'm gonna start being more active, I promise. And I'll try to come on video a lot more because it seems like hmm, I look all right. I'm not the best, but uh, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I, I want to be more in touch and interact with you guys more. So I need to be again more active on my Instagram. Uh, that has been on hiatus as well, sadly but I hope to post more pictures there for you guys to enjoy, you know, for your viewing pleasure. Let's go ahead and get started. So first up, we have Sebastian Michaelis from Black Butler. This is a 1 8 scale figure from Kotobukiya, and it's actually one of the first figures I've bought at a convention. Now, what I love about Sebastian is that he's actually a really detailed figure, and one of the only figures of Sebastian that I think is true to his appearance. A lot of the ones that I see, they look a little bit off. Like they're nice figures, but this is the one that I think really expresses his expression and his facial features very well, as well as his, you know, smugness as a butler. I also really love the frames that are behind him with the roses and thorns accents. And of course, white roses are always pretty and the black frames really make them pop. You'll also see that he's plating a uh, a bowl, I guess, of white roses. That uh, <laughs> just more roses always means more detail for me, so I can live with that. And the way that he's just kind of, you know, shushing like a butler would is very on point for Sebastian. All in all, I really enjoy this figure, and I want to get the rest of the collection from Kotobukiya. I believe they also have Grell and CL, so let's hope I get those soon too. Next up we have Altire from the anime Recreators. 
This is also a 1A scale figure from Good Smile Company. Now, when it comes to Altair, she's actually, you know, one of my top three favorite characters of any anime, aesthetically. I mean, she's got the twin tail hairstyles. She has a really military look to her, um, but it's all very pretty and it's very flowy. And I really love that her weapon is a sword with a uh, with a gun that's kind of being played as a violin. It's it's super interesting and it's one of the many quirks I like about her character. Now. This character I actually had on pre-order with Amazon for like seven months, I feel like, but nothing was coming out of that and it was getting released by other sites and so I decided to cancel the pre-order and cut my losses. Well, I found it on the AmiAmi uh, eBay page that they had and I snatched it up as soon as I saw it because I thought I was never going to get her and now that she's sitting in my case and she goes well with a lot of my other figures, I'm really glad I made that decision. You know, she's also got a really unique base. I don't think I've seen a base like that on a lot of different figures. And the fact that her paint has a really matte finish uh, really adds to the whole soldier military aspect of her design. So all in all, another great choice. And now for everyone's succubus waifu, it is Alberto. Uh, Albedo is from Overlord, and this is a non-scale figure from the company Union Creative. This is actually my first Union Creative figure, so I wasn't too sure of how the quality would be, uh, you know, compared to other companies uh, that are well known. I really haven't heard of them before, so I was a little apprehensive ordering, but once I saw the pictures of the final product that came out uh, compared to the, the prototype, I had to get her. She looks spot on. Uh, the wings, the wings are so massive. They take up so much room in the detail I have her displayed in. I actually have her displayed uh, with Sebastian, um, as well as another figure I'll be mentioning shortly. But the the scale of it is really is really an, something to be in awe about. Also, I really love the casual dress wear for Alberto. Usually when you see Alberto, she's in her formal gown, she's got a lot of jewelry, but here she's got these really high fashion Spartan sandals, uh, she's got this flowy tunic type over shirt on, uh, she's got some jewelry on her hands, uh, and she, she does have a more of a sultry look, which you don't really see sultry a lot with Alberto, she's actually pretty uptight. <laughs> Uh, so it's a really nice look for her, and all in all, I'm glad that I received her, and I may order from Union Creative in the future. Next on the list, we actually have a figure that's based off of an illustration. Uh, this is S from the A to Z illustration series. I believe the artist's name is Neko or Nico. Uh, this figure is actually produced by My Ethos, which produces a lot of Chinese-based figures from what I've seen, but this one was available on Ami Ami uh, because it is also being distributed through Good Smile. Uh, so I was able to snatch her up. What I really love about these A to Z figures is that they have a very like mercenary type look to them. It seems like I really enjoy mercenary aesthetics which isn't really something that I thought I would be into. I do also like frills and elegance, but seeing, you know, like a hard, you know, badass type chick as well uh, really fits into my figure collection, apparently. I know that there's also another A to Z figure that I just uh, saw on pre-order. I grabbed her too, so she'll look awesome next to S here. Uh, S is also a 1 7th scale figure, and I also have them displayed with Albedo and Sebastian. They all have a similar color palette, so I have them all on the same shelf. The expression here is so pretty, looking very stoic, but also really beautiful. I also think that the hair, um, the hair is a really nice sculpt. It's not super dynamic, but it is one that fits the figure and the form of it. Uh, again, I will be ordering from my ethos again, and this was just one of many purchases I'll probably have from them in the future. And now for my 
favorite character in No Game No Life, specifically No Game No Life Zero, the cinematic, it's Shuvi. This is a 1 8 scale figure from Good Smile Company, and even though it's 1 8 scale, it's actually pretty good size considering Shuvi's actual real life size. I really love this figure because it has so much detail. Uh, this is actually depicting a really dramatic scene within the movie, and having it come to life in a figure uh, is actually one of the highlights of my collection. Uh, it's got all of the different broken bits that Shuvi has. Um, it did also come with like a like an energy type disc, but I decided to display that uh, separately off of Shuvi. Uh, besides that, you can also tell that Shuvi's just kind of breaking down. You know, in this moment, there's not really much that Shuvi can do. Uh, just kind of hoping for almost a miracle to happen, and it really displays here in the figure itself. She also has a really cool base. It kind of reminds me of like a man on the moon almost with the popcorn texture, but the colors really pop out towards the, the kind of muted but also really colorful uh, pigments that you see in like Shuvi's hair and the mechanical parts of her. So uh, hopefully I can get some more Shuvi figures in the future. I do have a pop-up parade coming of her and there's a cool scaled figure coming out with both her and Shiro, so hopefully I can snag that soon too. Coming up second to last, we have Ishtar from the mobile game Fake Grand Order. Now Ishtar is a 1-7 scale figure and she is produced by Aniplex. She has been one of my highly sought after figures. Just the, the elegance and the grandeur that Ishtar displays is something I had to have for my collection. Uh, especially being a Fate fan, especially being a Rin Tosaka fan, uh, she definitely fits uh, right in with the aesthetic of the rest of my figures. Everything from the metallic gold paint to the brown to black fading of her hair and the fact that she's sculpted based off of her original artwork in Fake Grand Order uh, does make her a must-have. Uh, she, she was a bit pricey. Uh, most any flex figures do come off market at a higher value, but it was definitely worth the purchase. I do have my F next uh, Ishtar figure on the way, as well as my F next figure for a rescue doll. And since I have both the Ishtar and a rescue doll, Aniplex versions, I'm going to display all four of them together and they'll look so awesome next to each other, especially being all at 1-7 scale. Uh, I do hope to actually get some Rin figures soon that I can also display with this char because, you know, it's Rin face, just like how they're Saber face. Uh, anything that has Rin on it, I'm happy to get too. So look forward to seeing those here in the future. And last, but nowhere near least, we have Kiraki Show from Rosen Maiden. Now, Kiraki Show is a one-third scale figure, believe it or not, and she's produced by the company Griffin, which I don't really see a lot around these days. Maybe I'll look into this after the video. However, the reason that she's one-third scale is because Kiraki Show is a doll. So while normal one-third scale figures would be gigantic, uh, Kiraki Show is, is actually pretty accurate because it would be the third scale of a doll. So <laughs> that's why she's she's more along the lines of a 1-6 scale if you look at it as proportion to like someone who's, you know, 5 foot or higher. Um, but no, it's definitely third scale for Kiraki Show's character. As far as the figure itself, it is my first figure, guys. You know, I was never one for figure collecting. Anytime I saw a figure, I thought, well, I'm not going to do much with them. They're going to sit on the shelves, they're going to look pretty, but they're not going to serve any purpose. But then I found Kiraki Show. Uh, Kiraki Show is a rare figure. I can barely find her anywhere. I was able to find her on an eBay listing, and it was one listing. Uh, when I saw her, it was a masterpiece. You know, she has the long, flowing hair sculpt that goes all the way around, uh, which is super heavy, by the way. But then she also has that frosted outfit, and she has the silvery thorns uh, around her as the base. Honestly, it's the pinnacle of my collection, and I knew that once I saw her, that I was going to be collecting from there on out. 
So this definitely is what started my figure collection, is Kiraki Show. You know, I paid an arm and a leg for her. I might as well surround her with other figures that make it worth it, right? So <laughs> uh, definitely my, my favorite in my collection so far. And I'm glad I'm able to share her with you. So that concludes the top seven scale figures uh, that I covet in my collection. I really hope that you guys enjoyed what I put together. And if you want to see more content like this, just let me know. You know, I'm all ears. I'm happy to oblige. Um, and as my collection grows, I'm going to be bringing more videos like this. Right now, I'm, I'm really trying to hone in and curate my collection more. Um, I'm really focusing on figures that I absolutely want. I have a lot of prize figures and things that I do like to display and they fill space really well, um, but I really do want to start focusing more on scale figures. So feel free to uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more content from me like this, uh, just subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try to post more regularly and hope to bring more figures for you guys. Also, go ahead and sound off in the comments which one of these is your favorite. Are there any of them that you're trying to get as well? Because I know that I was watching back-to-back -back videos of each of these figures trying to, uh, trying to really scope out if I wanted them, and each of them was definitely worth the effort I put into to receiving them. Or what is your coveted figure in your collection? I would love to hear that too. So that concludes today's video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and thanks for watching. Take care. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed me actually being on camera and being in the video interacting with you guys, uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. If so, I'll be more than happy to do that in the future. But until next time, see ya.